Good morning, City Hill Church. We're so glad that you've joined us from wherever you are in Joburg and around the world. In a few moments, we're going to get started with the worship, followed by some announcements and a word from the Bible. But before we get started, I'd love to invite you, if you're not there already, come and join the conversation over at live.cityhillchurch.org.za. It really is a safe space for the church to, to communicate in real time and encourage and build each other up and bring words and contributions to the service as we do church in a new way. Now, if you're not already there, please come and join us. All you need is a web browser. So get that smartphone, tablet or laptop and just come and join the conversation. Before we start, I'm going to pray. Yes, Lord, we just thank you that technology allows us to bring church into the home each week and that we can still meet and communicate as a body of believers as a result. Would you bless this worship to us and encourage us as we look forward this morning? In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh, okay. Thank you, Isaac. Um, welcome to our home. Um, we are, the boys are going to help with some actions for a song. Um, it's a song that we have done before, but uh, we're all going to need reminding on the actions. So I'm going to talk through the actions. Um, yeah, have a listen now, everyone. So this is the chorus. These are the actions for the chorus. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Um, give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face my giants with confidence. Okay, and then the other part with actions. I'm going to sing and shout and shake the walls. I won't stop until I see them fall. I'm going to stand up, step out when you call Jesus, Jesus. Okay, here we go. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to. Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse. Because broken people are exactly who you. Here we go. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face my giants with confidence. Hey! You took a shepherd boy. You took a shepherd boy and made him a king. I'm gonna trust you, give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you fight for me. I'll be a champion, claiming your victory. Here we go. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. So give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. So give me faith. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. I'll be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. Sing and shout and shake the wall Won't stop until I see them fall Gonna stand up, step out when you call Jesus, Jesus I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the wall Won't stop until I see them fall Gonna stand up, step out when you call 
Jesus, gee, one more time. I'm gonna sing and shout and shake the wall. Won't stop until I see them fall. I'm gonna stand up, step out when you call. Jesus, so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. And give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. And give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face my giants with confidence. One more time. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. And give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. And give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face my giants. With confidence I can face, so I can face my giants. With confidence, one more time. So I can face my giants with confidence. Well done, guys. Simon uh, wanted uh, to share some verses uh, that he had chosen um, before the next song. So he's going to be reading from Psalm 20, verse 5 to 7. We will shout with joy when you win the battle. We will lift up our flags in the name of our God. May the Lord give you everything you ask for. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed king. His, he answers from him from his holy heaven. The power of the God. White's hand saves the king. Some trust in tra- chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the Lord our God. Amen. Yeah, Father, thank you that we can yeah, lift a, a banner of praise to you this morning. Um, and uh, thank you that we can put our trust in you. We don't have to, we don't have to trust in, um, in our own strength, in our own abilities, in, in things around us. Thank you that we... We can just trust entirely and, and completely on you, Father. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. There's a table that you prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body, your blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles And again There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies It's your body, your blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles And I believe you've overcome And I will lift my song of praise for what 
I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Thank you that we're surrounded by you, Father. Maybe it feels sometimes like we're surrounded by so many other things that are weighing us down oh yeah we want to declare this truth this morning that we are surrounded by you we want to stand on this truth Your mercy never fails me For all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Sing I love you Lord I love you Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing of the goodness of God I love you Lord You 
have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Let's sing. I will. I love your voice again. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I was saved in the goodness of God. All my life, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am. the goodness of God. All my life, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing in the goodness of God. I will sing. I will sing in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after it's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down and surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after it's running after me Your goodness is running after Oh, it's running after me With my life laid down and surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, all my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, I will sing in the goodness of God. All my all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will say of the goodness of God I will say of the goodness of God I will sing 
of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. God to, to draw close to your father who doesn't disappoint, disappoint us thank you father
Oh, I 
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to City Hill Church. We're so glad that you could join us today, and we really hope that today's service will be a great blessing to you all and just an encouragement in these very strange times that we're living in. Um, we really would love to hear from you if you are a first-time visitor on our site. Please will you send a message to let us know that you've joined us. Um, you can email bruce at cityhillchurch.org.za or just comment as you watch. Thank you so much for coming along with us. And just for those who are City Hill members, just want to remind you to continue giving. We want to be a blessing. And uh, I just think, when I think of giving, I think of the generosity we have received from our God and how we can overflow with that to others. So uh, we've got stuff we have to pay, obviously, but it's more than that. We want to be a blessing to each other. So I just want to remind you, please continue to, uh, to give at this time. If you have children, you will want something to keep them occupied during this coming week or today while you watch the church service. So please do look on our website and go to the Edge Kids link and you'll be able to find some notes there for your children. Yeah. Then I want to say, you know, we want to be a help to you. And this time, I know it's like, it's crazy for everyone. everyone no one knows really how to what tomorrow is going to look like. Um, I know this past week, I, there were times when I just felt uh, the lockdown was getting to me a bit. But we want to just be a blessing to you. And if there's any way we can help you at this time, please let us know. My name's uh, and my number is on the screen. My email address is on the screen. We want to be with you, even if it's just to pray for you. And on top of that, you know, we don't forget the food bank. The food bank's designed to be a blessing to those within the church, those outside. We we serve a number of people who, uh, in terms of money and food parcels every month. So we want to just be a continue to be a blessing, and we want you to join us in that. So don't forget your donations are welcome, cash or food. We'll take care of that for you. We want to remind you about our prayer wall, so please take a note of how it's grown. We still don't have everybody's photos. Uh, we would really love to have more photos, so please, if you've forgotten, quickly take a photo right now and send it to us so that we can put it on our wall and send the names of the people in your photo so that we can actually know who we're praying for. Please do that. We're really enjoying looking at the photos every day. Finally, at this time, we want to hear your stories. Um, stories of how God is working in this time of lockdown. And if you feel there's a story that you can, you've got that you can encourage the church with, please let me know. But today we're going to start with Ronnie and Kudzai. God has uh, been working in their lives and we've got them up to tell their story today. So let's hand over to them and let's listen to what they have to say. Hi everybody, I'm Kudzi. This is my husband Ryan. Um, we are probably a year now in South Africa and just have found it uh, so easy to get into um, and to get settled in and just kind of find our feet. Um, probably one main reason is because we were part of uh, this amazing Connect group. Um, whose leaders are Hans and Susan Sada. Um, we got to know them through a cousin of mine, Nicole, um, probably a few months before we came to South Africa. And it's been, yeah, just short of incredible in terms of just it being a very homely environment for us to just be a part of um, our family, to just connect with, uh, connect with other families. It feels like a multicultural sort of setting because there's so many different nationalities represented there. Um, and we've just seen the hand of God in many ways. Um, just ministered to me personally in terms of just every week just having somewhere where I can just touch base and be able to just be myself and uh, take a load off and just be able to share with, with family and friends just what's been going on during the week and in turn just be able to hear the hearts of the others as well in terms of what's happening with them and their lives um, and where i think i've seen it most effective is during this lockdown um, we've obviously had to do it through zoom but each week we have 
been able to meet up and just stay connected and yeah it's it's been really special just to have that to kind of you know not not have people that i can you know see face to face apart from my family but just be able to feel so connected um you know and that's been really special and so i'm just so grateful for that um and i know ron's gonna share but yeah i think for for me as well the the greatest joy is also just having a place where you can be accountable to it's so easy as a man to kind of do your own thing and survive but this season and this time it's it's been so good to have people to talk to people to pray with especially when you're feeling low you know half the time you 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 get into your own cave you don't have anyone to talk to but it's been very nice having people around that you can share your burden with and not just share your burden with but people who you know will be praying for you and i think that's so key it's 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 just family and a lot of the times when you're stripped away from family around you because as africans we're, we're so used to the concept of family and we're so used to the concept of community so it's it's so good to be in a place where you don't necessarily feel like you're alone you're in a place where you have family you have community and you can share and we've appreciated that so much even my kids have appreciated the whole family and community so we do encourage you if you're not part of a, a connect group get a hold of one because it's it'll save you it'll encourage you it'll strengthen you get connected thank you ron and kudzi for sharing your story with us today it's it's an incredible reminder of the value of community and the need to for us to connect and especially in these times you know i want to encourage you as a church to look for ways to be connecting with others in this time and maybe you're not even part of a connect group and you, you want to be let me know so i can connect you with others who are close to you who would be able to just encourage you at this time you know this listening to their story just reminds me of this uh verse out of these two verses out of uh, hebrews chapter 10 and verses 24 and 25 where it says this and let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works not neglecting together together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching Friends, I think this is a time in which we really need to look for ways to actively engage with this and encourage each other. You know, as I mentioned earlier that um, earlier this week, I was just feeling a bit, I don't know, it was just like a weird feeling. And that's, I guess it's part of the, um, the trauma of lockdown, but we need people in our lives to walk alongside us. And I want to encourage you to look out for those who may be forgotten right now and you people you can encourage and build up and if you need somebody i want to encourage you to push in and and to engage in these times with others uh because we need to build each other up well we're going to turn to the word now and we've got craig Boerta who's going to be bringing the word to us today he, craig has been a great blessing to us as a church over the years and I believe he's going to continue to be just that for us today. Let's pray. And as we come to this time of prayer, I want to encourage you to do something a little differently to what we've normally done. Look around at those in the room with you. If there are others in the room, there may be just your wife or husband. There may be your children as well. Maybe you're alone. Um, but look around and pray for them. Pray that this message today will be speaking into their lives and will be a blessing to them secondly pray for yourself sometimes we just need to do that to pray lord i want you to speak into my heart and pray that if there are any walls that have been built up that are going to hinder the reception of the word in your own heart today that those will be broken down and god will be free to do what he wants to do and then pray for others who are watching this that you don't know and you can't see. So there's a lot of people who are online with us now and later who will be watching this message as well. Pray for them that God would use this message to speak into their life. Let's take a minute and do that. Pray for those who are in the room with you. Father, 
bless them. Let the word be a word in season for them. Let it be an encouragement and a word to build them up. Pray for yourself. Father, I pray that I will be a person who's ready to receive the word today with eagerness. Whatever you want to say to me today, Lord, I want to receive it. I want to apply it in my life. Pray for those you don't know who are watching this with you. Father, I pray for them that you will speak into their hearts and lives. I don't know who's online with us now. But may this message be a blessing to many people for the glory of your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, everyone. It's uh, great to have you with us again. My name is Craig Boerter, and I'm preaching from Peter Maritzburg. We've been doing a series in Grace Generation Church called Living in Exile. And it's also good to have our friends from Gauteng uh, listening in at this time as well. And uh, just to say, guys, I, I love you and been missing you. And I trust that God's word is going to encourage us all today. So let's pray together as we come to his word. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your word in this uh, season of shutdown and lockdown. And we pray, Lord, that your word would come to us and would help us to understand the things that you are doing in the world at this time and also in us. We, we ask for a spirit of revelation and understanding to be upon us for your glory, we pray. Amen. And so we've been reading through the, the epistle of 1 Peter, and I want to just read a few verses to us as well uh, this morning. And, and Peter's writing in, we're going to read from verses 3 to verse 7. And Peter's writing and he says, uh, from verse 1, he says, To those who are elect exiles in the dispersion or the scattering in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, to the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Christ Jesus and for sprinkling with His blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so we have been learning how to preach on video uh, around the world uh, as God's church uh, has to contend with the lockdown. And uh, as we come to this word this morning, um, this has been a very relevant letter to us, uh, written by the Apostle Peter with the help of his friend Silas, uh, to the Jews and Gentiles scattered through the five provinces of Asia, who were starting to face opposition um, from non-Christians. And also, Peter knew that there was increased persecution coming. And so he writes, he wants to instruct them, uh, he wants to prepare them, and he wants to mainly strengthen their faith, uh, which is what I'm also wanting to do in this message today. We've already heard in this series uh, from Masala as he's helped us to see that there is general tension in the Christian life um, between the values of the kingdom of God on the one hand, and on the other hand, the values of this world. And uh, we know that uh, when we put our faith in Christ, the kingdom of God broke into our lives and completely changed us. And so the kingdom has come, but the kingdom has not yet come in its fullness. We, we still wait for Jesus to return. Uh, in, in His return, the kingdom will come in its, in its fullness. And so we live in this age, but we also experience the power of the age to come breaking in on us. And that's why we pray. And we say, Lord, let your kingdom come because it has already come. 
And we know that it is an increasing kingdom as God fulfills his purposes in the earth today. And so we citizens really of another kingdom. We're a people of faith living in a society of, of growing unbelief. We're, we're like we're in a foreign culture. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're like outposts of heaven on earth. We're on mission in the world. And, and sometimes we face difficult situations as we're facing at the moment. Um, and there are battles to be fought. And sometimes we feel uncomfortable because it's not always meant to be comfortable. And so Peter calls his friends elect exiles or resident aliens in the world. Um, and and he, he explains to them this, this gospel tension from stuff that comes at us from society and also stuff that arises within us as we long for more of the kingdom of God. And so Christians throughout history have lived with, with this tension. But I want us to see today that we're also living at the moment through a time of specific tension through this lockdown. And uh, it's, it's also created suffering and, and trials, global trials and suffering. It's, it's almost like we're double exiles. We're also at the moment banished to our homes. Uh, we can't travel. Uh, we can't fly anywhere. Um, and uh, people, are, people are struggling and people are suffering and, and, and people are afraid and people are scared. And, and we're facing global economic challenges as well. And, and here in South Africa, many folk are, are struggling uh, to even just find food um, as well. And, and my wife is a social worker. She's been working from home and uh, she's had to help a number of people just to find food and, and also to deal with domestic abuse. And we've been saying that, and many folk have been saying that what we're living through at the moment is really historic. And um, it's not just an interruption and then things go back to normal again, but we're looking at, at a shift. Um, and that's also created tension for us because we, we're not sure what the future holds. Um, and we know we can't go back to what we had before. So we're living in this unprecedented season. On, on a more funny side, who would have said two months ago that the banks actually want you to put on a mask and, and go in and ask for money? Um, but what I want us to do this morning is I want us to, to look at how do we make prophetic sense of this, this season? What, what might God perhaps be doing? The purpose of the prophetic is, is to alert us to, to what God is doing and to stir us to action. And Peter himself, as an apostle, he, he refers in his letter to the Old Testament prophets. The Bible says they, they searched and inquired, looking ahead uh, to when Christ would return. Um, and, and Peter refers to them. And, and, and you will find in, in the history uh, of the Old Testament that the Jews understood exile. And, and they'd been exiled before to, to Babylon because of their idolatry. And you'll find that the, the further they got away from Jerusalem, and the more secular it became, the more the prophets spoke. And the more the people became spiritually aware of what God wanted from them. And, and the Lord came to them and said, you're not going to stay in, in, in Babylon. This is not the end of the story but after 70 years, I'm going to take you back to Jerusalem and continue to work out my purposes among you. And the Messiah will come. And, and, and we know that we're living on the, on the other side of that, of, that prophecy, of that prophecy. And so the prophetic looks ahead and, and, and tries to guide us. And, and we know that, that the Jews learned from, from listening to the prophetic word as well. And, and, and so for us at this time, it'll be good for us to... To be looking and asking God, what perhaps may he be doing at a time like this? And to help us, I, I read an article recently um, that, that from the, the Gospel Coalition that said in 1939, in September 1939, when, when Hitler invaded Poland and Britain declared war on, on Germany, um, Martin Lloyd-Jones, who was a famous preacher in London, he preached five sermons to his congregation on why does God allow war. And, and, and while he was preaching, he said to folk that there's often, there's often two crucial ways that we can, that we can understand 
um, what to do in a time of crisis. And he said a time of crisis and a time of suffering, such as the Second World War was, he says it, it can become for God's people a lens to see what God is doing. And it can also become a mirror for us to look at ourselves and, and, and see what God may also be doing in our lives. And, and, and I think this virus is providing such an opportunity. It's, it's, it's zeroing in in our lives on, on, on what our relationship with the Lord is like. And, and, and our faith, is it real? And it also is, is, is also shining the light on, on things in our own lives that, that perhaps need to change and to shift at a time like this. And so I want to use this analogy to help us this morning. So let's first start with the analogy of, of a lens. Um, and, and we see that we're looking at what God has done for us and what he's up to now. Um, and Peter starts by telling us what God has done for us already in Christ Jesus. The, the New Testament always tells us what God has done for us before it encourages us to do anything. And, and he says, and, and Masala brought this out so well last week, he says, we're chosen exiles. Uh, we, we didn't apply for God's kingdom. We were chosen and we were brought into this living hope with Jesus who is alive. Back behind your faith in Christ, God was at work and he chose you. He loved the whole world, but he set his love on you and on me. And, and that helps me so much to know that I'm, I'm a chosen exile uh, when I go through a time of crisis, when I go through discouragement in, in exile, to know that I'm chosen, to know that I belong, that I've been adopted into the family of God, that I have a purpose. God has a purpose and a plan for our lives and that I have an assignment right here on earth and I have an inheritance that is imperishable, it's undefiled, and it's unfading, and it's kept in heaven for us. And so Peter reminds them, and he reminds us through, through his letter of what God has done for us. He, he shows us the bigger picture of what God has done for us. And we, we must keep reminding ourselves of these great truths. People were saying to Lloyd-Jones at the time of the Second World War, do we need this theology? Don't we just need words of comfort? And he said, no, we need to be rooted in God's word at a time like this to know who we are as we face tribulation and, and trouble. But secondly, God is also, I believe, strengthening us at a time like this. He's strengthening our faith. And the Bible tells us that it says these trials have come so that... So that, and those two words really jumped out on me as I was reading this letter. So that your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, may be found genuine and bring glory to God. Martin Luther says, faith enables us to see past the visible event that is in front of you and see what God is doing behind it all. Earthly wisdom sees visible things and understands but faith, like a lens, it, it sees the invisible and it perceives what God is doing. And, and friends, I really believe God is looking for persistent faith at this time to go on and on believing in Jesus, no matter what, what happens. God loves to be trusted. Um, and, and I believe he's teaching us that at this time. We spoke a few weeks ago about, about simple faith in Jesus that, that gets us saved and, and, and justified and, and adopted into the family of God. That, that really was stage one faith as you put your faith in Christ. But we need to go on, as I said, to stage two faith, which is persistent faith through suffering, through crisis, through my own doubts and weaknesses and fears and even sin, through opposition, through a viral lockdown and through whatever the enemy may throw at us. We need to, to trust God. And as we do that, he matures us and He brings us into our inheritance. And as we trust Him, as everything around us is shaking and everything is shaking right now, we, we find that we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so God allows these trials so that our faith may grow, the Bible says. And sometimes He may seem absent. 
just as Jesus himself felt the absence of the Father on the cross. And he cried out, God, my God, my God, why have, have you forsaken me? And, and we may feel God is absent, but, but I want you to know that he's with us through this time. He himself plunged himself into suffering so that when we suffer, we may know his, his nearness. He dwells with us and is in us. And Jesus himself was made perfect through suffering. I, I, I heard a story once about a silversmith that was purifying silver. And he was holding the metal um, in a container over the fire. And ke- he kept heating it up and, 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 uh, in order to purify the silver. And someone was watching and, and said to him, how do you know when the silver is, is, is fully purified? How do you know when, when the heat has been enough? And, and the man smiled and looked at them and said, well, it's, it's when I can look into the pot and see the reflection of my face, then I know that the job has been done. And, 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 and there's a sense in which God's doing that. He's, he's purifying us. He's strengthening our faith in order to prepare us for what is yet to come. And Christians have historically thrived during times of, of trouble. They, they, they kind of come alive and, and find all sorts of strength in God that we never knew we had. Um, God says to us, my grace is sufficient for you. Um, and, and, and it's been a time when Christians have really done well, even though it's been so difficult. And Peter also understood um, that, that God uses these times to, to achieve his purposes in history. Just as he did with Christ on the cross, he, it was it was it was God's plan and purpose that Jesus would suffer on the cross, and yet at the same time he was put to death. It says in the book of Acts, at the hands of sinful men. And God can work through evil, through sinfulness, through a virus, through suffering, through catastrophe to achieve His purposes. He's just absolutely amazing, and 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 God is doing that at this time. I want to encourage you. In that way, this virus has just been simply too global, too impactful, um, too sudden to not see that the hand of God is also in it. Last year, we had that prophetic word that where the Lord said, uh, when 2020 starts, when I lift the curtain in 2020, everything is going to change. It will not be business as usual. I have fresh things for you. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself in private. Prepare your heart so that when the curtain rises in 2020, you will be ready and waiting for what God wants to do. But now let's also put the lens down and at a few things we felt perhaps God was doing. And let's pick up this mirror and, and let's look at ourselves as well at this time. And, and I want to just say a few things about what God may be doing in us. And I, and I firstly just want to say that we really need to make the most of this historic moment that we're going through. We, we need to make the most of it. We need to not waste this crisis, as we've said already. It really is, in some ways, as, as you'll see, a reset. God is resetting things in our lives and, and in our communities and, and in our churches even. And so Peter says, firstly, prepare your minds for action. Be sober minded. Uh, Our our minds need to be sharpened right now. God is looking for for resilient disciples. We we mustn't give in to sinful passions, but we must be prayerful and watchful uh, at this time. Uh, Be alert to to what God is doing and to what God is saying. Peter says that be sober minded. Um, don't give the devil a foothold in your thinking because, because thoughts become footholds and footholds can become strongholds. I know I've also struggled during this, this lockdown, especially when I've gone out, done some shopping and come back. It's, 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 it's been stressful and, and we're having to take precautions and, and, and a spirit of fear can can grip our hearts and and we can start thinking thoughts like I'm going to am I going to die? Am I am I facing financial collapse? Where is God in all of this? These are thoughts that, that go through our hearts and through our minds and 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 I would encourage you to to talk to yourself, uh, not just to to listen to yourself, 
at a time like this, particularly regarding fear at such a time. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, the Bible says, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And, and so our minds are, are really not just a, like a computer managing data, but your mind has a spirit, a, a way of looking at things, a map of reality. And, and we need to be aware of what's going on in our thinking at such a time like this. And, and also I would encourage us to, 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 to move in the opposite spirit to what we're picking up in society today, perhaps on the news and, and what you're reading and, and what friends are saying. Jesus did that with his apostles. He sent them out in an opposite spirit. He said, I'm sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. And that he said to his frontline troops. And so I would encourage you at a time like this to, to look to the Lord and to move in an opposite spirit. Uh, perhaps God is dealing with our busyness and our exhaustion at a time like this. We'll move in the opposite spirit and get some rest in this season. Maybe he's dealing with our materialism at a time like this. And, and we need to, to look at our finances, how difficult that may be, and, and, to, and to simplify things. And to simplify what we're spending money on. And, and look, at, look at releasing funds for the kingdom of God. I believe he's also teaching us generosity. There's been a tremendous outpouring of generosity in South Africa that's really united us across races and, and cultures and backgrounds and languages. And, and it's been tremendous what God has done in the hearts of, of people in this country as well. I believe he's also teaching us to pray again, um, like uh, from, from our places of confinement, just as Jonah prayed from the belly of the whale his place of confinement. He's teaching us to look to God and not to, not to lose hope. One look at the virus and ten looks at Jesus in order to, to strengthen our faith. He's helping us to deal with idols in our lives and, and, and the things that, that have entangled our hearts. He, he's really he's taking us back to basics again. I think that's what that he's doing. He's, he's, he's dealing with us personally in this in this lockdown, and I would encourage you to lift up the mirror uh, of God's word and, and allow God to speak to you. And that's my second point. Let God speak to you at this time through his word. Commit yourself to the regular reading of God's word, large chunks of scripture, and, and listen to good preaching at a time like this. Uh, when you hear his voice, it's a sign of his presence with you. Write down what he's saying. Uh, remember God's promises that he's already given to you, his prophetic promises. Meditate on God's word. If you can worry, you can meditate. Think through the stories in scripture. Uh, put yourself there with Jesus and his disciples. Uh, imagine what happened. Uh, let the scriptures come alive in your heart and mind again. I feel what's also so important at a time like this is also to recognize God's voice. Voice recognition in this season and remember the the quieter you are the more you're able to hear our society has become so complex and and, and so 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 driven that uh, the need for for rest and the need for solitude and the need for quietness to hear from god at a time like this has never been so important and and i've tried to zoom out of a lot of things um, in order to capitalize on this season, I'd encourage you to do the same. Thirdly, um, I would love you to also look at growing in your own self-leadership at a time like this. I really believe that, that we could see the revival of family life, of marriages, and of households during such a time as this don't be over dependent on the pastor or the church service at a time like this and that, that may shock you i believe god is dialing down celebration for a season and he's strengthening community life he's he's emphasizing again the priesthood of all believers and it's absolutely wonderful as as people testify to spending time together and time with their children 
And I would encourage you in your leadership in the home to, to do that with your family and even in your marriage as well. If you're on your own and, and you, or you're single and, you, and, you, and you're feeling lonely uh, and, and you're feeling, well, I'm on my own and, 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 and there's no one with me at this time. I would encourage you to look to God and, and, and He's with you. And, and we're also doing our best to, to connect with people through our life groups at a time like this, through, through community. Paul says to the Philippians, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not only in my presence, but also in my absence. For it is God who is at work within you, both to will and to act according to his good pleasure. It's one of the greatest summaries of the Christian life. And, and, and Paul's saying, as, as their apostle, he's saying, I can't get to you. And, and you need to work out your salvation at a time like this. I know what that feels like. Um, and, and yet God can also strengthen us through a time like this. God can strengthen our leadership. God can encourage us and strengthen us. And that's really what's happening all over the world at the moment. Uh, leadership is under the spotlight. Personal leadership, family leadership, business leadership, church leadership, government leadership. Um, God is, is, is at work shaking and strengthening the leadership, various areas of leadership throughout the world at a time like this. And it's a time to reflect and it's a time to be prepared to change. It's a time to also reinvent yourself and think about what you're doing. I've had to do that with uh, my training I do. I've been traveling a lot and training in various contexts and I've had to think, how can I do that again? Uh, now we can't travel. I've had to look at putting stuff on video and, and reinventing myself. And I would encourage you to think along the same, the same lines as well as we look ahead um, and, and get fresh vision for, for the future, for what God would want to do amongst us. Um, and reinvent ourselves in, a, in, a, in a, perhaps in a very different world that is evolving. Um, but we're not on our own. I want you to know that. Um, the Christian life is really a true partnership. It's, it's a partnership between you and God. Without God, I can't. And without me, He won't. Our efforts become His instrumentality. And so I would encourage you in your self-leadership. I'd encourage you in the home. I'd encourage you in the small groups as well. God is emphasizing that at the moment for a season. Let's, let's, let's be alert to that and let's run with it. And fourthly, he's also teaching us dependency in this season. He's trying to move our identity, I believe, from what we do for him to who we are in him. Personal renewal always brings corporate change. And I would encourage you to allow God to renew you and to, to strengthen you as you depend upon him. Even slow down so that God can catch up to you as well. Simplify things in your life so that there's time to spend in his presence. Peter says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. We get anxious in exile because we think God won't look after us. And I would encourage you to throw your anxieties on him, your fears, your family, your finances, your future, your feelings, your failures, your need for fellowship. And even when you fail, cast your anxieties on Jesus. And the Bible says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart from where things emanate. And it will guard your mind where the real battle is, 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 is waged. Guard your heart at a time like this. And God will, will bless you. Think about how to live instead of worrying about dying. Think about how to thrive, not just how to survive. Don't let survival preoccupy you. Commit yourself afresh to the kingdom of God. Ask God to not help you be afraid, to help you to not be afraid of death. It's really just a change of, of address. Um, when the plague hit Europe, uh, in, in, in 1347, many of the Christians stayed behind uh, in order to care for people because of the gospel. Uh, let's, let's ask God to help us, not just to worry about, about dying and, and what may happen to us. Let's trust Him. Let's look to Him as He strengthens our faith at a time like this.
And finally, know that God can break in to our situation at any moment. I'm so expectant for what God is yet to do. Peter says in 1 Peter 4 verse 7, he says the end of all things is near. And how could Peter say that so long ago to to persecuted Christians? And, And Michael Eaton says, well, we're not looking for dates on a calendar. That might not be near at all. We're looking for the readiness of Jesus to break into our situation at any time. And in that sense, the end is always near. It may not be the end of the world, but it can be the end of our world. God can break in at any time and change things around completely. And I'm trusting him that he's going to do that. He's got the attention of the entire world at the moment. He could be setting everyone up for global revival as, as, as he moves behind the scenes in this unprecedented season. And so as I draw to a close, friends, may your faith be strengthened. I'd love you to, to finish this sentence as a takeaway from this sermon. Perhaps finish this sentence as, as, as your takeaway. God is at work in me right now so that. Please finish that, that sentence. God is at work in me right now so that. So that he may do new things, maybe new responses, new wineskins, new way of doing things. Maybe he's dealing with stuff in your life. Friends, let's not, let's not allow this, this virus to go past without maximizing our time with God. We have God's word as a lens and we have God's word as a mirror. We have the work of the Spirit in our hearts as well. And I would encourage you at this time to look to Him and allow Him to shift things around, not just globally, but in your heart, in your family, and in your life, for His glory. We pray, Lord, let Your kingdom come. Let Your will be done in my life on earth and in this unprecedented season. Let me pray for you as I close. Won't you just stretch out your hands and just pause for a moment as we we call upon the Lord and we ask Him to come by His Spirit and to strengthen us even now. Let's just open our hearts to Him. Lord Jesus, we thank You for Your presence even now. Thank You, Lord, that You are with us. Our Emmanuel, our God with us. Lord, won't you come and strengthen us? Won't you come and strengthen our faith? Lord, won't you help us to see more and more what you're doing prophetically in this season and have faith that behind the scenes you're you're at work, Lord. You're, you're, You're building your kingdom. We're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And Lord, in our own lives, we we ask you to shine your your light into our lives, Lord, as we lift up that mirror. You would be at work in us as well, in the home, in our personal lives. You'd prepare us for the future, we pray, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, that your name may be glorified. So come now, Lord, and and, and touch us, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us now. Friends, let the Spirit of God come upon you now. Let the presence of Jesus come upon you now. Wherever you are, as you listen, open your heart to him. Jesus is with you. Jesus is is in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord, that assures us of your reality. We love you, Lord. Have your way in this season and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. City Hill Church, we're grateful to Craig for serving us well this morning and i wonder as he has been speaking whether god has been speaking to you why not just take a moment and think about what did you feel god saying to you at this time this morning you know god has called us to be doers of the word and we need to respond to those things so take a moment and do that and as you do that 
I also wanted to say a big thank you to you all for joining us. This is your first, if this has been your first time, thank you. Please join us again, but let me know that you've been here. I'd love to hear from you. And for, for the rest of City Hill Church, let's push on to glorify God in every way. Let's make a difference in this world and let's not let lockdown COVID-19 hinder the mission of God because this is an opportunity that God has given us. May God bless you all in the week ahead. Cheers.